Welcome to Crystal Waters International Ministries, where we are impacting the world with Christ's love. Today, get set to hear the life-changing living Word of God. As Denise L. Adams teaches the living Word, your life will be impacted and transformed. And now, here's Pastor Denise. Glory, hallelujah, welcome to Crystal Water Spiritual Institute. I'm so excited for what God is doing in our midst. We're uh, in the middle of a lot of classes right now. One of the classes we're teaching on, the one today is on Holy Spirit Dynamics Part 1. And we're talking today about the anointing, how uh, the anointing affects us and transforms our lives, but basically also about stirring the anointing and releasing the anointing and getting filled with the anointing continually. We need these things happening in our life to be fresh, alive, vibrant, full of life, full of energy, full of God. Amen. We have to, we have a responsibility to take care of these things. And, you know, when Jesus came in, in uh, Hebrews chapter one, we see that he came and he, he came in uh, to the 40 and he, oh no, actually it's Acts chapter one. Um, sorry about that. Uh, he came and he talked to the apostles uh, for about 40 days concerning the things of the kingdom. So Jesus is here today and he wants to talk to you about some things concerning the kingdom to refresh you, to encourage you, to give you understanding so that you can remain fresh, alive and vibrant in him. Amen. Glory to God. Well, let's take a look at this today. We're talking about the anointing. We're talking about how God wants to empower us to do the work of the ministry. One of the first things in and uh, crucial things is is prayer. We we need to pray. We need. Um, we've talked about this in the prayer course. And there's a whole course on that. Glory to God. But a prayerless person is a lifeless person. You need a prayer ministry and a prayer ministry, um, a praying to God, communion with God, uh, to be effective. And if you're not a praying church, you're not going to be an effective church. You need to be a praying church to be an effective church, glory to God or ministry, whatever you're doing. If you're not praying, you're not seeing, you won't be seeing results and the anointing won't be there. You need the anointing. Glory to God. You need the anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. And we know that we pray with the Bible, with the word of God. We've talked about how the Bible is the word of, uh, word of God. We need that together. So prayer and the Bible kind of go together there. And uh, we need that time in the word and in prayer. Glory to God to stir ourselves up in our most holy faith. God's word is active and alive. It says is sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And that's Hebrews 4, 12. And we need to understand the word of God is moving mightily. Hallelujah. And when we pray and we use his word, amen, we are stirring up. What God wants to do, we hear from heaven, the anointing falls, the anointing's even here right now, and I'm thrilled about it. You know, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, it talks about um, that the, when the Holy Ghost fell, they were all together, they were praying together, and the Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know, the Spirit of the living God will give you utterance in the Spirit to pray, pray in tongues, to to speak in tongues and it's very vital you need that for the anointing to flow so that you can actually uh, be able to be bold to uh, pray for other people to declare the gospel that's why we're here is to declare the gospel and not a powerless gospel but a gospel with miracle signs and wonders amen and holy spirit wants to confirm that word great scripture i learned many many years ago is in acts chapter 4 verse 29 and if you have a Bible, you need to turn to that one. I really recommend you do that tonight or today where time it is. I like this system I've got going here. It's a timeless system. When you're ready to hear the word, it'll be here for you. Verse 29 says, and you see what's happened is the apostles are all together and um, uh, Peter and John were arrested and uh, they got out of prison and everybody's upset and uh, so now they're in the prayer meeting. Prayer meeting's on. 
And he says, And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, verse 31, the place was shaken where they had assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. Glory to God. And the multitudes of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Hallelujah. And it goes on. Verse 33, it says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Amen. You know, it's um, it's a good thing when we see the Holy Ghost come upon the people and uh, the Holy Ghost empowered the people. Great power was given to do the work that needed to be done. We need great power. Amen. And we see they all work together. We see that they shared the things that they needed to share and no one lacked anything. They were just helping each other out. They were getting this done together. There was such a wonderful spirit of unity there and it's it's wonderful but that's how you stir up the anointing they prayed they prayed together they came together they petitioned the lord and he poured out his spirit afresh and boldness came upon them and miracle signs and wonders followed the preaching and the teaching of the word jesus says ask and you shall receive we need boldness amen we need a prayer life and we need to petition the lord for those things that we need Amen. Well, the next thing I want to talk about is faith. Faith is required to catapult your hope into action. Hallelujah. We know, we know we only need mustard seed faith. That's all that we need is mustard seed faith to move a mountain. And Jesus says we have that measure of faith. Each and every one of us has enough faith. So if the devil ever lies to you and says, you don't have enough faith, you can say he's a liar. Jesus has given you mustard seed faith. And that mustard seed faith is so powerful, it can move a mountain. Glory to God and cast it into the sea. Are you seeing that? It's powerful stuff we've been given. So you have been given the measure of faith. You just need to use it. Glory to God. Amen. That's all we need to do. See, when we use our faith, we're releasing the anointing. When the anointing was released, the more you do it, the more you, it's like exercise. The more you do it, the easier it gets. The more you have, the more energy you got. That's how it works. Amen. Praise God. You know, God even framed the world by faith. Glory to God. It is substance in the spirit that we need to move forward in life. We need it to move forward in life. And, uh, it's interesting we're seeing how we pray we have faith we uh, use our faith um, to catapult our hope we have our hope set on something and we use faith to get to what we don't even see faith is the substance of things hoped for so faith is what gets you to what you've hoped for amen glory to god the evidence of things not seen Glory to God. Do we see that now faith is the substance of things hoped for it's tangible Brothers and sisters, it's tangible stuff. It's tangible stuff. It's real. And uh, as you use your faith, your faith in action, things happen. Use your faith by using your words. You use your faith by using your actions. And you know what? It's all done by love. It's all done by love. It says faith works by love. That's Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. Faith works by love. Glory to God. Well, let's go back to Hebrews 11, verse 1 through 3. I want to take a look at it. There's three scriptures here that are powerful scriptures. They're power-packed. Today we're talking about the anointing, how to stir the anointing, how to release the anointing, how to increase the anointing. Glory to God. Uh, and uh, the Hebrews 1, 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Glory to God. You want a good testimony? You want to see the things that you hope for arrive on time and target? God's time, that is. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Hallelujah. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. What does that mean? Let me unpack that one for you. 
By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So when you speak God's word, you're framing your world. And so by words which you cannot see that come out of your mouth, things are made and become appear that weren't even there. By your words which are invisible, those are the invisible things. They're not seen. They create a reality for you in your world. What you're speaking is what you'll be getting in the kingdom of God. That's God's principles. That's not my principles. That's God's principles. So it's Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the world's worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen, the things that you see, were not made of things which are visible. Okay, so praise God. Do you understand the ministry or the business or the marriage or the life you want to see will be made by your words in faith released into the earth. Glory to God. Amen. Are you seeing this? And they will become visible. You'll see them. Amen. Glory to God. That's how the anointing is released that's how the anointing is stirred. That's how the anointing is increased. Glory to God. Amen. Now your action starts with your thoughts become words. Words become actions. Actions become deeds. And then the deeds become habits. So what happens is you, you start with your thought life, which is, you know, if you're going to the word of God, hearing from heaven, worshiping God, your thoughts are going to be kingdom thoughts. And your thoughts are released through your words. And your words become actions in the in the spirit. Glory to God. They become they they move on your behalf. They're faith filled words. Those words have power to create. They are the raw substance in the spirit to bring forth earthly things. The it takes things from the spirit and brings them into the earth. I can say it to the that way. When you act on God's word, you're it's it's acting and believing God for great things. Amen. Without action, there's no life without words. You're not going to go anywhere. And if you're speaking defeat, I just pray for you today that uh, there'd be a turnaround in your mouth, that those words of defeat would no longer taste good any longer, that they would taste, um, uh, they would be sour in your mouth and that you would not want to release sour words, but the sweet words of the spirit of faith and of joy and of peace and of gentleness and goodness. God words, hallelujah, will come out of your mouth so that you will be victorious in your life. The anointing will be released. The anointing is in God's word. The anointing is released through those words of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. In James chapter 2 verses 14 to 26 is something to really take a look at I do have it in the manual and yes I'm putting a manual together and I know I've gotten a few texts and saying hey when's it coming out it'll be out shortly just to give the the woman of God a moment to catch it all together put it all together for you well in verse 17 it says thus also faith by itself if it does not have works is dead but someone will say you have faith and I have works Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You see, you can have works, but there may be no faith in them. As a born-again believer, when we act in faith, when we have faith and action together, it is explosive in the spirit. It, it, it causes tremendous shift in the spirit. Glory to God. Verse 26, it says, as for, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also so you can have all the faith in the word but in the world but if you're not releasing that faith if you're not speaking that faith if you're not acting on that faith nothing's going to happen and let me tell you love is the a secret agent ingredient it is the uh, uh the, uh, the active ingredient that's the word i'm looking for that transforms it and moves you forward in life we're talking about the anointing we're talking about releasing the anointing we're talking about stirring up the anointing we're talking about growing 
in the anointing. Hallelujah. And we're looking at different ways, different principles, kingdom principles that Jesus has given us. Amen. To, uh, to um, activate us, to increase us, to expand us, to let the river flow through us. One of my most favorite ways is through worship and thanksgiving. When we worship God and give thanks to God, when we focus on him and delight in Jesus, he will fill us with new wine. This new wine is the anointing. This anointing is precious ointment from from heaven for our lives. His love flows and fills us, lifts us, and makes all things new and fresh again. Glory to God. Well, let's look at the scripture. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 to 20, it says, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. How does that happen? Verse 19, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Those are songs that come out of just worshiping him that you you release. They just come to your mind. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. As we look unto him and spend time in worship and praise and adoration and have thanksgiving in our heart, you get filled, you get filled with the spirit and it's like new wine. You get, and many, many become drunk in the spirit. They just feel like they're drunk, but they're not drunk in like with actual alcohol. It is spiritual wine by the Holy Ghost for your benefit. It will cleanse your body. It will heal your body. It will shift your thought life. It will help you to the overflow. It will empower you. You know, I I remember a teacher once saying that, you know, have you ever seen a drunk person? They don't care. They're just bold. They're loud. They'll do what they want. They act silly. They'll just, they'll just do it. And that's what God wants us is to be bold, loud, and uh, uh, happy, joyful. Amen. And he, the, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so being happy and drunk on the new wine is a good thing. We need that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We need the Holy Ghost. The worship and thanksgiving is crucial for our lives. When I think about worship and thanksgiving, I remember many years ago, I, there was a time when I was thankful for hot water. Seriously, hot water in my house. Many of you may have that same thing. That's one thing I was really grateful for. I had traveled to different nations and Nigeria and Zimbabwe and India. And oftentimes there was not any hot water. You had a cold shower and uh, it was cold, just cold, no hot water at all. And um, living in Canada, you need hot water also because if you don't have hot water and it's the winter time, it's not a good thing. And so, and what am I saying? What am I saying is be thankful. It doesn't matter what you have. Be thankful for what you have what God has done for you. Be thankful for the times he's healed you. Be thankful for the little things, the smallest things. Look, make a list. I, I, I encourage you today, make a list of 10 things that you are thankful for, no matter how small. Maybe it was a, um, a bag of rice that someone gave you. Maybe it was something that happened 10 years ago and you can't remember anything else since that time. I don't know what you've gone through. I know people go through a whole lot. But when you're thankful and you remember God in those things, because every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no shadow of turning. It it came from God, that good thing. And as we thank Him for even the smallest of things, He hears us. Hallelujah. And what happens is just a shift in your thinking. There's a shift in your life. You become God active and God activates you and God stirs you. And then you start having God moments and then your life starts turning, turning around and turning around. You know, I've heard of a lot of a, a lot of poor people all over the world. We have poor people here in Canada and we have poor people in the United States 
and in Africa and India and Asia, all over the world, there are poor people. And there's different levels, of course, of the poorness. And, you know, I'm not dismissing uh, the challenges that people go through. I'm not. I've been there. I've seen it. I've seen the devastations in Africa and India and, and different parts of the world and in Canada. In fact, just yesterday I was downtown Vancouver and went through a section of town that was for where the homeless live. And um, it's in the heart of the city and they're just homeless. They have nothing. They don't have a roof over the head. And, and now I know there's certain situations and circumstances, but what I'm getting at is that every person, and I'm talking to you now, has the ability because God is on your side. And as you stir up your love for God and are appreciative, the anointing of God will come and God will help you to take you higher. I've known many people in Africa who've been able to uh, get jobs, to um, create businesses. God will give you a great idea to start a business. And that will be an anointed business that will change not only your life, but the lives of people it was intended to touch. And that you could be that example in your city and in your nation of what God can do. So there are no limits and there are no boundaries with God. Just because you're in Africa or maybe in the streets in Vancouver or in, um, in, in India, in Jango Redigudam in India, wherever you are, God is able to help you and to lift you from where you are. He will give you creative ideas. And through uh, your worship and thanksgiving and prayer and then your action and framing things and trusting and believing God, he will put something in your hand to help you move forward. Don't neglect the small thing that's in your hand. Wow, am I ever, I'm, I'm going in a whole, whole direction, but it's the anointing that destroys the yoke and removes the burden. So if you have a yoke that needs to be destroyed, a burden that needs to be removed, be thankful for what you do have. Be thankful for what you do have. Whatever it is, however small it is, it was a gift from God. And uh, I know God wants to give you more. As we look to him, he will increase you. He will give you the ability to create wealth. He will teach you. That's in the word of God. I believe it's Deuteronomy. He will give you the ability to create wealth. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's go on. We're talking about the anointing, how to stir the anointing, how to release the anointing, and how to increase the anointing. We're talking now about Jesus' name. Whatever we do, we do it in Jesus' name. Whatever we do, we do it in Jesus' name. His name is above all things. When you speak and declare words, as you declare it in his name, you're releasing, you're invoking the power of that name to bring about the move of the Spirit in his name to create that for you, that the Father would be glorified in the Son. Hallelujah. His name is above all other names. And we've taught about the name of Jesus, and I just want you to be aware of the name of Jesus so that you can move forward. Hallelujah. Well, let's talk about the anointing in Revelation knowledge. When God reveals his will through his word, we can have confidence in what we are to do. In Ephesians 1 16 we see that paul prays for the people to receive revelation knowledge you can too amen you can do that too as we receive revelation we can have confidence that he will do what he said he would do the point is if you do not know what has been provided for you through redemption you will not operate in that anointing for instance if you think you have to earn your healing you will not operate effectively when you know Healing is your inheritance. Hallelujah. Praise God. Revelation. Knowledge cannot be taken from you. It is the key God uses to increase the anointing flowing through you. Let me say that again. Revelation knowledge cannot be taken from you. And it is the key 
God uses to increase the anointing flowing through you. I've used this example a number of times. Let me use it again. In, in Canada, uh, many people have microwaves. I don't know if you have a microwave where you live, but it's like a piece of machinery. And if the machinery has a clock on it, and you only think that the machinery is there to do for the clock, uh, what happens is you're limiting yourself to use that machinery as just a clock. God wants you to know everything about what he's given you, the principles of the kingdom of God, so that you can operate in them, so that you can receive all that you need. But you, are, you limit the anointing, you limit what God can do, because of the level of revelation knowledge. So we need to ask for revelation knowledge every day. You do, I do. We all do. We all need to ask for God to reveal his secrets to us, reveal the the, the treasures of the kingdom of God, open our eyes, let us understand it, let it burn in our heart, let it enter into our heart, let it be branded upon us. Amen. Glory to God. Let's look at the scripture. I want to read it to you. And I trust that you will highlight this prayer in your Bible. And, you know, Kenneth Hagin Sr., he actually read this scripture three times a day when he was a young man in the, in the ministry uh, f- so that God would reveal things to him so that he would uh, uh, be a blessing to the nations. I know at the time it was just a blessing to his church and to help the people. But it was a blessing not only to him, but to the world and to his family, even his personal family. So we need to pray this prayer. Here it goes. Praise God. I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power. Sorry, of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. I see we're running out of time right now, so I've quickly gone through that prayer. We're going to pick this up in the next class. God bless you richly. We'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. For booking Rev. Adams' prayer requests or more information regarding our ministries, please visit our website at www.crystalwaters.ca. Message us at info at crystalwaters.ca by phone at 1-778-285-1111. Post Office Box 52562, Coquitlam Center, Coquitlam, B.C., V3B 7J4.